This is the Bedini Classic 100 Class A amplifier. Pretty unimpressive looking for something that costs a small fortune, but um, audiophiles have their quirks. <laughs> and I know because I've got friends who are crazy audiophiles. Great respect for them. I just don't have the same golden ears. But this is not the first Bedini on the channel. I've done a Bedini 25-25, which was a 25 watt stereo amplifier. Belonged to the same person. Now he came to me with this monoblock. It's a 100 watt mono amplifier. And of course, it would be quite useless if it didn't have a twin brother. This being the twin brother. Now this one's had the top taken off because I wanted to see what was wrong with it. There's not that much wrong with it, actually. He told me that he wants the two of them restored. They're looking a bit grungy on the inside. The outside is in perfect condition, but the inside... I'll give you a closer look in a minute, but one of them was actually not switching on properly, and I've actually figured out what it was. He wanted me to do the restoration on both of them, and I decided just to show you this because it's not something you see every day. In fact, trying to find one of these or a set of these in the market is not as easy as you'd think. There aren't that many around. Now, I've uh, learned my lesson as far as commenting on the choices of audiophiles, so I'm not going to tell you what I think about the value of these amps. I know they cost a small fortune. I know that they are very prized by those who are lucky enough to have them. I see it as a pretty simple amplifier, which is probably a good thing. I'm not uh, knocking it. It's probably the best way to do things is to keep it simple stupid. And this thing has really been kept as simple as it can get. They've gone for the important things and they've done it right. They've got a massive power transformer over there. They've got some massive filter capacitors. So they've gone for a very clean, beefy power supply. And then they've just gone and used multiple transistors in parallel. I can't find the exact schematic for this, but that's what it looks like. They've just kept adding transistors on in parallel, probably using matched sets if they could get them or create them. But the point is, this is a work of art for those who really appreciate it. For me, it's a project that I think I'm really going to enjoy because it's a lot of mechanical stuff that I need to actually physically repair. There's really nothing to do with the electronics. Interesting nevertheless. Let's have a closer look at that guy. I haven't opened this one up yet. I'll show you what this one looks like close up and perhaps you'll understand why it's going to be a mechanical job. So here we are. We've got our transformer. We've got our two filter capacitors, huge filter capacitors. I believe they're 32,000 microfarads in total. We've got our... <laughs> now, I don't know if this was standard, but this is the uh, power lead. It's not a host pipe, it's the power lead. And we've got that on both of them, separate ones. I have... Uh, I, should, I shouldn't do this, but I have my opinion about how useful this is, because once it gets into the wall, you've got normal two and a half millimeter wire probably the cheapest the builder could find providing power to this. So why you'd spend this kind of money on that, it's it's not my money. So I guess I won't go any further with that comment. Anyway, the point is, all this amp has is an on-off switch, toggle, a LED, and a volume control. That's what we have at the front. And the back is equally stark and simple. Remember, this would have the top on it. The back has got a little bit of information for the little that it has to show. It's got the input here, an RCA socket, the speaker outputs, negative and positive. This, I believe, is a fuse. Yep, same as that one. That's a fuse. That'll probably be on the speaker lines. The fuse will blow and not your speaker, hopefully. And here we've got this massive power cable going in here. It's very sturdily held in place. It has to be. Another fuse. This would be the mains fuse. 15 amps low blow. This would be for... I believe 15 amps would be for 200, 420 volts. We're using 230 over here. So I presume the uh, the amperage of the fuse would be half that, half the current for double the voltage. So when we take this off, it literally comes off by removing two screws on either side. That's all it takes. This is what we're left with. And this is where you start seeing the problem. The owner lives right by the seaside of Madeira, and we get a lot of sea air, which obviously has a lot of salt in it, and with salt, salt air or sea air comes rust. So our transformers have got a fair amount of rust on here. Even the screws down there have got rust on them. They'll have to all be removed and de-rusted one at a time or a couple at a time. You know, I don't want to cause any damage. You've got to be careful when you're playing with these things. You can actually damage it more than you fix it if you don't know what you're doing. 
Now this really looks a little DIY to me. The board seems to have been made at home, but it's the power supply section. I can't see the rectifier. I presume it's underneath there, but we've got our two filter caps over here. We've got some uh, film caps across the filter caps, separate fuses, really beefy fuses over here as well. So besides the one down there, we've got two over here as well. This will probably be on the output, on the secondary of the transformer. And he's actually written here, 220 volts, 50 hertz, which is what we use here nominally. It's actually closer to 240, but no problem. And if I'm not mistaken, that's 2-2-2004. Two, two, so 2nd of February 2004. And that's about it. There's a signature. So somebody's obviously put their name to their work. Okay, let me show you the actual amplifier. And this is what our amplifier looks like. We have got one, two, three, four, five transistors. Remember, this is mono. And they seem to be... I believe pretty much in parallel. I'm not actually sure. This is class A, so you could parallel them as long as you've got the right um, emitter resistors. Uh, that will compensate a little bit for any imbalance in the in the rating or the, the specs of the transistor. They, they're probably pretty well uh, selected to get them as close as possible to, to each other in terms of specs. But that's it. Our transistor bank's over there. There's the heat sink. And then we've got some drivers, pre-drivers or drivers over here. These are MJ, MJ15024. That's an MJ15024 as well on their own heat sinks. Some pre-drivers here on smaller heat sinks. They've used uh, these Vichydale uh, resistors, which are obviously very, very good quality. I can't tell what that is. But again, they've gone for very good components, but a very simple circuit. What would you have? You wouldn't have, yeah, you'd have the bias, the bias current, the quiescent current set. I don't even know how you'd measure the, the quiescent current setting. I presume you'd uh, disconnect one of these wires that goes up here, probably one of these really big ones, and uh, adjust it till you get the right current to get the right bias. But I don't think I'll need to do any of that. What I'm going to do have to do is I need to remove everything that's metallic. I need to clean everything over here. I'll check these capacitors one one by one. I'll actually remove one leg and test them for uh, value, for ESR, for leakage. Make sure that this thing is uh, ready to last a very, very long time. Now, there are obvious, obvious signs moisture got in here. There's that screw there, completely rusted over. I'm going to have to lift this board up. I'll remove those uh, spaces and screws or bolts, nuts, de-rust them. And I'll make sure that all these solder connections have not been affected either. Obviously, solder would not react the same way, but I just want to make sure that everything is in good shape before I close this up. But I'm going to show you the underside, and it's, again, surprising. When you look at an amp that is basically this, with a hell of a lot of heavy support hardware on it, and then you look at the other side and you see this, you realize that this person really does like things to be simple. As I said, I've got nothing against that. I quite like the concept. I actually agree with the concept. But let me show you how simple this is. There's the back of the audio of the RCA jack. So our signal comes in here. It goes to the volume control over here, which is just a straightforward volume control. The signal wiper comes out of here and goes up into the amp section. That's our signal taken in. Then obviously the um, the outputs come out here and where do they go to? It's this one, our ground and our signal. The signal comes to this fuse. Through the fuse, there's a small inductor here to the um, positive terminal for the speaker. That's it, that's our output section, done. Oh, here's the rectifier. I wasn't sure where the rectifier was. This is the rectifier, silicon rectifier, bridge rectifier. Again, nothing too complex about that. Then at the bottom, we've got the power section, the input power section. This is the mains cable. This cable has one, two, three, four strands per phase. So this is our neutral. This is our live. And our earth comes to the bottom, which gets bolted to the chassis over there. The uh, line or the, the, the phase comes in here through the fuse which goes to the switch over here. Out of the switch, comes back to there. And from there, I presume it goes to the transformer. And we've got the power indicator over there. Nice, simple, and has represented Audio Nirvana for a lot of listeners. The lucky ones were able to get their hands on one of these. 
All right, I'm going to get cracking, get the cleaning going, and report back when I've got that done. I'll report any issues if uh, any rear their ugly heads. Will you look at that? This thing looks absolutely immaculate. This is quite a job because those um, trying to get those transformer covers off was quite a, a hassle. But well worth the effort. So this one is done. And I'm going to test it for you. Let me show you the other one, which I haven't started yet. Here it is. Quite a difference. Now, let me tell you what I found. Everything here is working perfectly. Perfectly. I tested everything. Everything is working perfectly. The capacitors are good. These capacitors are like new. They are very, very good. Everything is working immaculately. The only problem was the dust and a bit of rust on those transformers and on the screws and so on, which, as you saw, was all done. And because of the simplicity of this design, this is a beautiful design. I mean, once you start working on it and you, you see what he's done here, you've got to hand it to them. They did a great job. They've kept it simple and they've kept it good. They've used the absolute best components you can get hold of. <sighs> you know, the sort of thing you dream of when you want to build an amp for yourself. These guys did it and some people were lucky enough to get hold of them. As I said, nothing was needed electronically, nothing. It was just maintenance and cleaning. Now, I'm going to show you the result on the scope. I'll first do a quick test of the um, DC offset, see if we've got that under control, if it's not high. Under 20 millivolts DC offset on the speakers, which is very, very good. I mean, for this kind of amp, the Class A amp, that is amazing. I expected a lot more. I think usually you can take up to about 70 millivolts. This thing is perfect. I love it. So I'm going to put a signal in here. We'll see what sort of power we're getting on here and um, we'll check the signal on the scope. Right, here we are. I've got the uh, signal coming in, a one kilohertz tone. I've got it, a one volt RMS signal coming in. Obviously the volume's on zero. This is on. And let's look at the scope. I've got the speaker on so we can hear it. But I'm going to put it on dummy load, 8 ohms, so we don't have to listen to the noise. And now I'm going to play with the volume and the uh, setting on the scope to get a peak. This is RMS voltage we're seeing over there. I want to see what the peak power is. Now what I need to be careful with is my dummy load resistors aren't that great. So I want to make sure I don't keep it up there for very long or they'll probably boil. So let's see, 3.3 volts. Keep going. Oh, still not there. 10 volts per division. Still hasn't clipped and we're at 26 volts. So I'm going to give it 1.5 volts RMS. They do say that that is what the sensitivity is for. So let's see. We're at 6 volts. Let's see how high we can... Oh dear. I can't do the scope any further but it seems to be clipping there. So just before clipping, we've got 26 volts. 26.5 volts. Okay. What does that work out to? That is on 8 ohms. Let's try it on 4 ohm speaker. Twenty-three point three. Okay. Those resistors must be ready to boil coffee. And there you have it. A uh, monoblock Medini Classic 100. Restored, if you can call it that. It's more like um, manicured <laughs> and um, cleaned up nicely. And it's producing, well, actually more than I expected on the uh, 4 ohm load. And I think my 4 ohm load resistors are actually a bit more accurate. It's 23.3 volts squared divided by 4. That comes to 135 watts. So it's way above the 100 watts they mention. At uh, the 8 ohm load, which I think is actually a bit more than 8 ohms, 26.5 squared divided by 8 is about 88, 87, 88 watts. So not quite the 100, but this thing, uh, these resistors are not that reliable. Also, my power supply is a bit low today. So 
this thing is doing what it's supposed to do. And I really have enjoyed working on this, especially since it is such a, an iconic piece of equipment. And you know what? The best thing about all this is I've got another one to do. <laughs> yeah, good things come in, uh, in pairs. So what I wanted to do today, I think I've achieved. I wanted to show you what this thing looks like, what it can look like, and um, basically just tell you what a wonderful little amplifier this is. I wish I had one or two. You need two. Yeah, there was the 100-100. So there was a stereo version. I haven't seen that before. I've seen the 2525, which is a 25 watt stereo. But this one is a first for me as well. And I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video, rather different format. And I'll see you soon for the continuation of the Saba Stereo One restoration, which I'm working on at the moment. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. If you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon and on PayPal. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.